Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I am here at Maker Faire 2014 with Charlie Brinson, who is one of the people behind the Titana Boa. Charlie, how are you doing? Good, I'm great, yeah. You, you guys have built something that's, I mean, frankly, really terrifying. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, well, what exactly is the Titana Boa? Well, Titana Boa is a, it's actually a reincarnation of this ancient snake that went extinct 50 million years ago. So it, that, that thing was actually 50 feet long and one ton, and so we recreated it in this form of this uh, machine that you see in front of you, yeah. Gigantic robotic snake. So, okay, tell me, a little, what was, so you, inspiration was the prehistoric snake. How did you guys get started? How many people worked on this? Like, what's the backstory on the, on the, on the, on the ride? Uh, it started, yeah, it was just a, like a, an idea that I was, I was milling around in my head and uh, actually was going to build a, a big snake and I read the article about them finding fossils of this Titanobo and that's what really kicked it off. I was like, yeah, we should build this thing, reincarnate it. So we got um, a Swiss uh, robotics student involved and we did a lot of simulations, physics simulations, calculations and stuff. And then slowly but surely over the course of that year, the team ramped up to about 15 or 20 people. And we built most of it in that for in that kind of six month chunk after after doing the design. Yeah. So okay, so the mo modeling how a snake moves is a kind of tricky thing. It's not you know there's no wheels, there's no legs, there's this slithering motion, and it seems like you're kind of mimicking that with wheels, but still the hydro the hydraulics are what's actually giving forward motion, right? Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing works like the hydraulics are the muscles of the snake, um, squeezing, uh, contracting, and expanding. Um, and they, they propagate that wave motion back through the snake, which actually gives it propulsion. So when you're driving, you have to remember to always kind of be doing curves and, and um, sometimes that's complicated while you're navigating around obstacles, but also trying to keep that S shape. So yeah, we, we had to read a ton of papers on snake motion and, and there's been a lot of people who've researched the heck out of that, so yeah. So, okay, explain how the controls work. Cause this has got to be, I noticed you have a saddle on it. Nobody rode when we were here. But, but how do you steer a, a, a one-ton, 50-foot snake? Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty complex. There is a lot of components and a lot of feedback sensors involved. Uh, there's uh, five different microcontrol microcontrollers on the, along the spine controlling, sequencing all the motion. Um, but in reality, when the driver's uh, navigating, he's just directing the snake, the snake head, and the software is propagating that motion back through the spine. So it kind of... Uh, automatically repeats what you've done according to a set of uh, parameters that you can input like your propagation rate and so forth. So how fast can it go? Uh, I would say if you really crank it up you can go a, a brisk walking pace maybe a little so it but at that point it's pretty out of control so we like to <laughs> just to reserve that for open uh, areas like there's too many people here to really get going. So in the middle of the desert, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, can we talk a little bit about the construction? It's, it's a really neat design. You have, it looks like it's kind of modular. I mean, obviously each vertebra is its own module, but then in the sets of vertebrae, it seems like every four or five stuff starts to repeat, the hydraulics and the electronics and all that stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about how it actually, how it actually works? Yeah, so yeah, exactly like you said, there's modules of five vertebrae, uh, and those are kind of repeated. And each, each, each module, five vertebrae, has its own hydraulic system its own battery pack, its own microcontroller, and they all communicate. Uh, and the reason we had to do that was just because um, the number of sensory inputs and feedback and controls that have to be done are too much if we if we did the whole snake all in one package. And the, also the hydraulics, it's easier to um, distribute a hydraulic pump and motor, like a smaller one repeated rather than one huge one, which you typically see in regular hydraulic machinery. Right, right. So, okay, so then what's the battery? It's battery powered, you said? Yep, uh, lithium polymer batteries. Yep. And, and how long can you ride the snake for? Uh, probably about, uh, I'd say about an hour, maybe two, if you really load all the batteries on. We have like a, a kind of a modular battery system too, where we can just put as many or a few as we want on at one time. So um, you can kind of scale it up and down depending on what, what the conditions are. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. Uh, where can people find out more about the Titanoboa? Uh, they can go to titanoboa.ca, which is the website for uh, info and pictures and videos, and also edart.org, which is kind of the umbrella organization that um, spawned this project. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, and we'll have more from Maker Faire 2014 on Tested. I'm Will. See you guys later. Bye.